Hello and welcome to this little animation about the light independent reaction or the Calvin cycle and we're going to talk about how we take the products of the light dependent reaction and we mix them with carbon dioxide and with the presence of a few other chemicals, few other compounds, we create those organic compounds, glucose uh, and our carbohydrates, our proteins and our lipids. And we're going to start off by the very top. We're going to talk, start talking about carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide, as we know from GCSE, diffuses into the stomata. Once it's in the leaf, it's going to diffuse from the stomata up into the chloroplast and then through the chloroplast into the stroma. And so we start off with this and it's one carbon atom that is contained in carbon dioxide. So we're going to show one C there in a little box. Now, this is going to take part in the cycle. And this is going to combine with another compound called RUBP or ribulose bisphosphate. Now, ribulose bisphosphate is a five carbon compound. So these two are going to combine together and they're going to combine together uh, in a catalyzed reaction. And the catalyst for this is an enzyme called Rubisco or ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase. But Rubisco is a lot shorter. And this is actually going to create an unstable six carbon compound. We've never been able to manage to isolate this. So we know it exists, but we've never actually managed to actually capture it. So it's so unstable that instead of actually sticking around as a six carbon molecule, it's going to actually just break down into two three carbon molecules. So this is going to form glycerate three phosphate or G3P for short. So we've got two molecules that are three carbons each. So it's not looking too useful just yet, but it will get there. So these are then going to be reduced. This glycerate 3-phosphate is reduced and it reduces into something called triose phosphate or GALP, it might be called as well. And so this is going to need some energy. So it's going to use 2 ATP from the light dependent reaction. It's also going to need protons because it's a reduction reaction. So it's going to need the NADPH from the light dependent reaction as well. So we've got ATP being changed from ATP into ADP plus inorganic phosphate. And then we've also got NADPH being oxidized into NADP. So those protons are then going to be given to the triose phosphate. And that is then going to create two, three carbon molecules that are going to go into useful organic compounds. But we'll talk about that in a little minute. Now you might think, okay, we're done. Right, we've got the we've used the carbon dioxide, we've made it into something we can make useful organic compounds out of. Not quite. It is a cycle. So we need to then take it from triose phosphate and we need to recreate ribulose bisphosphate. Because otherwise, if we don't recreate that ribulose bisphosphate, we're not going to be able to have it a cycle. We're going to run out of things. It's going to only happen once, the plant's going to die, things are going to go wrong. So we need to make that ribulose bisphosphate again. And what happens is that triose phosphate, again, with the ATP from the light dependent reaction, is chopped and changed and forms ribulose bisphosphate again. So we end up with that chemical that is essential back there again. Now, a little bit of math time here. So if we form two triose phosphate, each with three carbons, that gives us six carbon atoms in total. But we need to regenerate ribulose bisphosphate, which is a five carbon atom. How many times then do you think the cycle needs to go around to make one glucose? Feel free to pause the video here, have a think about that because it is a little bit of a brain bender and also you might end up with exam questions asking how many times the cycle needs to go around in order to generate different, um, different compounds. So six, six times it needs to go around. So let's have a think about this one. Um, You've got your triose phosphate, you've got three carbon atoms in your triose phosphate, you've got two of them, there are six carbons. Five of them are taken away, which leaves you with one carbon. Now we know that glucose is C6H12O6, so we need to go around the cycle six times in order to be able to generate those six carbons. Now remember uh, that every time the cycle goes around, five carbons are taken to ribulose bisphosphate. So six times for just one glucose molecule. <clears throat> now that might seem really, really, really inefficient, but it does work. Things keep generating. It uses the things from the light dependent reaction, the ATP, the NADPH. We know that the, uh, the oxygen that's produced during the light dependent already diffuses out into the atmosphere, which is the oxygen we breathe, but also some of it is used for respiration, which we're going to talk about next. And then 
you need to regenerate your ribulose base phosphate as well after your calving cycle. Nice and easy, really, actually. It's a massively complicated looking diagram, but it's pretty simple in the end. Thank you.